we're gonna get into this and um let's not turn the comments into a, a world war three a bloodbath i don't have time for that today so first of all i want to check in and i hope you're okay because this feels very intense and i don't know if there's like any like thing attributed to these strong feelings but i do genuinely believe that ice spice and sexy red have talent Hey guys, it's your girl Cameron and I'm back at it again with another video. And today we are back at it, reacting to your guys' craziest, most insane music takes. I made a post in my community tab asking you guys, what are your unpopular music opinions? It can be any genre and most importantly, unpopular because I really wanna have some good discourse here today. And a lot of you guys answered. So for those of you who don't really check out my community tab, please do tap in with me because not only do I post polls on there, but anytime I do videos like this, I ask you guys for your thoughts. We're going to do it game style edition as I always do on this channel to make it fun, to make it interactive and more engaging. So the topics we're gonna explore today are pop, R&B, rap slash hip hop, artistry and miscellaneous so we are going to go over full scope yes i'm going to be doing the rap category today um so stay tuned for that because this is the first time we will be tackling that and i'm begging guys these are opinions if you don't agree it is never that serious just random opinions that really don't harm anybody let's keep it cute let's keep it happy let's keep it light and let's have respectful discourse in the comments please hit that subscribe button down below if you would like to see more content just like this video and thank you guys so much for joining me today we're gonna have a great time grab your snacks kick your feet up do the whole thing because it's probably gonna be a long video and let's just get right into your crazy takes so we're just gonna spin the wheel and see where we land first to determine our first category all right let's spin the wheel all right guys our first category is pop music opinion number one says sabrina carpenter's fame and success are temporary as you guys know sabrina carpenter just came out with her short and sweet album i actually did a review on my patreon so check me out down there but actually her recent album short and sweet is her sixth album and there's this perception that she's just had everything kind of handed to her because she's had this insane run as of late because of espresso and please 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 and the constant number ones if we really take time she's been acting since 2011 she was in girl meets world and actually her first music single debuted in 2014. people who have been in the industry longer hustling right have a greater chance of sticking around longer because you tend to know the business you tend to know the industry and you know what it's like to really have to fight your way up the ladder people always want like this instant gratification and assume that that's what this is so from people like sabrina to a lot of other artists who are finally having their time in the sun you guys might actually be surprised that they've worked hard and that they're maintaining and they built the building blocks to create a sustainable career i disagree with this i think that she'll be just fine it's one thing for people to not love her music and everybody's entitled to that but to just kind of say like it's temporary and it doesn't make sense mm, i don't think it's temporary people actually used to tease her about her music career never getting off the ground like she was just on this hamster wheel so so this next one it's gonna shake the table a little bit but he said we give her her flowers vocally but commercially brandy not britney set the template for the pop girlies of the late 90s and 2000s and it's only looked past when folks dissect the teen pop boom because she's black and thus relegated to the r b genre brandy had pop hits she was a teen idol she had her own doll line did soda commercials she even dated the lead singer from one of the biggest boy bands of that era i think that this really does trace back to this idea of a lot of black singers are relegated to r b spaces as a well we put them in the history book our impact is not always fully weighted properly on our impact on the culture she was absolutely a teen sensation she had her own tv show moesha um she did the cinderella movie with whitney houston that was like my favorite movie growing up unfortunately you are correct that her influence is absolutely understated in these realms and it's the fact that we really have to like sit down and think about it to really give her her props yes vocal bible now what i will say is i think that the reason why somebody like britney gets that credit is because the numbers were also there and yeah like she's a white pop star 
very like quintessential girl next door American teen. And this all plays into the idea of giving credit. A lot of people do look at numbers and impact versus actually looking at the root of the impact. And I do think that Brandy served as a blueprint for the possibilities of marketing a teen star. Oh, we can get them a Barbie doll. Oh, we could do a TV show. Oh, we could do X, Y, and Z. So I definitely think Brandy should get her flowers for that. These bigger stars we looked at use other people as source material. So let's get Brandy her flowers. This one. Someone said, I feel like Chapel Roan has a real irritating voice. Like it kind of sounds like an opera song. And she does have an operatic vibe, especially toned to her vocals and this expressiveness. I was listening to the chorus of Good Luck Babe, for example, and for sure. A lot of you guys have asked me my opinions on her musically. I really appreciate her artistry. I like the idea that she's doing something out of the box and she's really pulling from drag culture as well. So I love like this campiness. Um, but to be honest with you, I kind of agree with this. I just cannot fully get on board with her music as a whole. She has some songs that are cute, but I'm just, it's not my vibe. It's not my vibe sonically. Yup, 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 yup. And you pointing out like that opera tone might have put the nail in the coffin for me because I just don't, I don't really like it that much. But it doesn't mean she can't sing. She can sing. It's just not not for me we're music listeners over here and that is a sheer fact because you clicked on this video and you're watching right now i know you all love your earbuds and are always looking for better ways to maximize and enhance the music listening experience so today i would like to thank raycon for sponsoring this video tuning into something great requires you to tune out all of the noise around you and this is why i'm eager to tell you about raycon's everyday earbuds and yes they've gotten even better the new upgraded model now has active noise cancellation and if you have haven't gotten a pair yet now is the time to check them out because their new upgraded model will actually blow you away one of the biggest things for me with my earbuds is comfortability and with my raycons i can say goodbye to earaches and my earbuds falling out and not only do they have earbud tap functions which help reduce the discomfort when using them they also have an ergonomic design that fits the widest ear range and sizes and the earbuds also have gel tips for a cozy custom fit and we got to talk about the protective case covers because can we talk about how cute mine is look at this the quality it's soft it's durable um, and it also gives such a personality and aesthetic and a vibe to my music listening experience and you guys know that I love a little bit of self-expression with me and everything I have and everything I do and my Raycons do not fall short of that and due to its wireless charging capabilities I don't even have to take my protective case cover off to get 90 minutes of battery within only 10 minutes of charging perfect for being on the go now i personally love using my earbuds when i'm editing the videos i make for you guys because i can really tune into the subtleties of the audio i can block out the noise around me and really lock in and they're comfortable so i don't have to keep taking them out and readjusting and messing up my workflow so you can use these when you're walking when you're working out i use them a lot when i'm cleaning in the kitchen and just doing things around the house so i'm so eager to share this product with you guys today click the link in my description or Go to buyraycon.com slash Cameron Suzanne to get 15% off of your Raycon purchase and free shipping. Yes, free shipping. So thank you so much to Raycon for sponsoring today's video and we will get right back into the video. My next opinion, someone said, Thriller by Michael Jackson is the worst song I've ever heard in my freaking life. Um, I hate everything about it from its production to the lyrics. Every time the song plays, I get full on panic attacks. Every song from Thriller gives me a lot of bad and negative emotions. So first of all, I want to check in and I hope you're okay because this feels very intense and I don't know if there's like any like thing attributed to these strong feelings behind the song and the album second of all though i will give you this thriller like traumatized me as a kid music video the song i had to do like some work to unpack that but it is kind of odd that like some halloween ass song that i believe it was released in like november like november 29th or something like that of did numbers and like literally broke boundaries and broke records like it's actually kind of funny because it's like why like for what but you have to, I think of it from like a storytelling perspective, the production guys, the overall essence of the song was captured so perfectly. And then we have to talk about the music video. I mean, that changed the world. It literally changed the music industry as we know it. Like revisiting the whole, like every song on the Thriller album gives me bad and negative emotions. Let's unpack that because every song, like The Girl Is Mine is probably the most chill, laid back, like frolicking through a field song I've ever heard in my life. 
Human Nature, Michael Jackson's best song, by the way. So calm, so soothing. That's interesting. That's very unpopular. I've never heard that. But do you, boo? It, someone said that Billy should drop Phineas. Billy, by the way, Billy Eilish. Phineas is her brother, who is her co collaborator and longtime producer. He said, at this point, it's just Phineas' production show, and I want to know for sure who Billy is. It's her name on the album. From what I understand, though, guys, they've said that Billy Eilish is technically a duo project, but Billy is really the face. So if that's the case, like we've seen this in music spaces that, you know, you use one person's name, but really it's a team behind. It's like a band. It's like a group. But a lot of people kind of feel like she's maybe a little too comfortable with Phineas and his production and with her brother in the creative room. Let's be very real. It can be a stifling effect because Billie has absolutely found her pocket. But I think in this stage in her career, it is going to be crucial for her to, and even if it's with Phineas, to be crucial for her, I think, to start really switching up and pushing um, the artistic boundary. Like I would almost say do like a, a, a 180. I'm not even gonna lie. I would love to hear Billy kind of do a 180 sonically. And I really think that sometimes trying a different producer or working with another collaborator can really awaken new sounds. It can wake it up and really expand you as an artist. Like I think of, I'm sorry, I'm so insufferable. I think of Sweetener by Ariana Grande. Working with Pharrell, a lot of her fans did not like it. I got it the first time. But the reason why people didn't like it is because it really turned and flipped her sound upside down on its head. And some of her best work came from it. I feel like that's an example of sometimes you have to branch out from your, your usual collaborators, your comfort zone. Or maybe doing like a collaborator album with like another producer just for fun. Like just as like a side project. Someone said Janet is the queen of pop. This is controversial in the sense and I'm going to frame it very properly. There has been a debate for decades if Madonna is the queen of pop or if Janet is the queen of pop. I think that this can be another conversation of people not getting their just do flowers. The way that Janet was able to obviously be in the spotlight since she was a child. Not only just because of her family, but she had acting roles. Like she was on Good Time, she was on Fame, she was really building a brand. She had like this polished image from her childhood, um, navigating that from her first album to reinventing herself through each album, guys. And she was often relegated to the R&B space. But let's be very clear. Listen to some of her discography. She's such a versatile artist. Put on Someone to Call My Lover, that is pop perfection. And I've said this before very briefly, but there was always an urge to call Britney Spears, Madonna's a protege. But quite as kept, Britney was loud, very loud about Janet Jackson's inspo um, to her artistry. And if we're being real, I think that Janet has had much more of an impact on someone like Britney. So to be honest, I don't think that this is a crazy opinion, but people are definitely going to push back on this because when you look at like the comparison between a Janet or Madonna, you can argue that Madonna is much more global and she also pushed those boundaries as well. Musically, I like Janet's music a thousand times more. I'ma just put that out there. That's probably unpopular, but a lot of people when we look at like Queen of Pop, again, it goes back to like people look at numbers and equate that to like soul impact versus looking at who was like source material for a lot of the greats that would come and we cannot un ignore the fact that Janet was that so I'm gonna just leave that food for thought I, I teeter because I get both sides but like let's not downplay Miss Janet Jackson I'm probably gonna get a lot of uh flack for for talking about this one someone said Taylor releasing variants to stay at number one isn't petty it's good business and builds her legacy you're just salty she's more successful than your fave. I kind of don't love how people resort to jealousy um, when, pipe, when people highlight realistic concerns of setting certain precedents because you are right. Taylor has the resources and she has the fans to get this off. Let's be very clear. And a lot of people don't. And But that doesn't mean that you have to do that. With her tortured poets department situation, a large level of concern that had been raised by people was the consistency of her like almost monopolizing and blocking people from number one spots. Now, there's still debates over that. A lot of people have said like Taylor was going to be trending to be number one regardless, but a couple people where this was controversial, it was Charlie XCX's release of Brat. It was Billy's album. I think she got number two. Girl, I don't know. And I really don't fully care about the numbers. 
But even some of her own fans have said that they were fatigued from the excessive marketing tactics. And people have even argued that there is a like lack of artistic integrity and that she's kind of turned into like this money machine. So I'm going to be real. I think that nothing is fair in the game of love and music. Um, it's a business. So from a business perspective, the artists and labels want their money. There's a lot of artists who do variants. A lot of artists do stuff. I've never seen it on the level of Taylor Swift. But Taylor also has a lot of money, right? So a lot of people kind of feel like, why do you need to keep doing this? I don't know. There's a demand. It's supply and demand. I don't think it's all resulting in the idea of jealousy. I think some people want some sort of reform or like to make a level of fairness. There are some people who have like legit frustrations with this and it's not just jealousy it's not just being mad and people articulate that and some of y'all just don't want to hear it someone said that woman's world is a great pop song that would be widely loved if it wasn't produced by dr luke and had slightly better lyrics and i actually enjoyed the music video there's no defending lifetimes so. though this is definitely unpopular fun fact actually i think lifetimes was better than woman's world and even that song was not good great pop song is a reach like that is the reaching of reaching i don't don't even know how to really describe that i think people have to also remember that people expect more from Katy perry when you hype up a release like you haven't released in a long time you've held and you still hold some of the greatest records of all time and you are somewhat of an innovator in pop there are certain expectations people have for you people are not going to sit here and be amused by your terrible song that sounds like it's stuck in 2016 it's a no for me dog but if anyone else i feel like made this song who was a smaller artist an upcoming artist it would have went nowhere because the song is just bad it's just it's just a bad song so that was our pop category for today let's spin the wheel and see what we get next so our next category is going to be rap and hip-hop the first opinion someone said i prefer doja cat singing versus her rapping it's more so the tone for me i found the tone that she raps with rather annoying streets for example lyrically she can rap her ass off and she's one of the best rap performances we've ever seen i'll never take that from her but personally her singing is more pleasing and suitable for my ears than the tone in which she raps no notes i agree with this ten thousand percent if i'm being honest with you guys i think that's one reason why like i haven't been able to fully get into doja cat i give her her props i give her her flowers just like this person does here but like the theatrical tone when rapping i don't feel like needs to be implored a lot and sometimes it just feels a little bit forced it feels a little unnatural and some people stylistically like that but i think for me like personally it just needs to be implored very sparingly and it's case by case and still stylistically i don't really like it it gets on my nerves to be quite honest and she does have a nice singing tone so i agree i think a lot of people will disagree with this but you're on to something you're not wrong next one this one's gonna ruffle some feathers someone said i do genuinely believe that ice spice and sexy red have talent i think their vocals and flows are great but they need better writers and better marketing teams and managers they could have long-lasting, impactful careers if the music industry didn't treat them like a gimmick. So, <sighs> great vocals is crazy. Especially when we talk about Sexy Red. That's crazy. Um, I think that this comment, no disrespect, is the epitome of giving people too much credit for talent that doesn't really exist. If anything, I think that out of the two, Sexy Red has a decent flow and does know how to write a beat. I can understand why it's catchy. It's also very like nostalgic. It comes from like this very like Y2K sound, but I Spice, the beat is either beating her or there's awkward pauses and she's saying nothing because she can't write. And it's uninspired punchlines, bars, putting the onus on like the labels, making them a gimmick. I don't think it's actually just all the label. Maybe like with an Ice Spice, sure. The label's always going to try to like amplify things two times 10, but I think that both of them have also treated themselves as gimmicks and have leaned into that because they don't have a lot of sustainable talent to begin with. Sexy Red, like those lip glosses that she dropped not too long ago, everybody's surprised about that, but she had been dropped those and been talked about that a year plus ago before she even like truly, truly, truly blew up. Ice Spice with the fart song, give me the light. The jokes write themselves and they're writing them. I, I, I don't even put all of that on like the industry. They don't take themselves very seriously. So how do you expect other people to take them seriously? You don't. We're gonna get into this and um, 
let's not turn the comments into a, a World War III, a bloodbath. I don't have time for that today. We're not going to do that. These are opinions. Everybody calm down and chill out. Nicki Minaj. I had a, we had a lot of Nicki Minaj comments under this. So I'm going to address a couple of them at the same time. Someone said that Nicki Minaj is not the queen of rap and that female rappers owe her nothing. Another person said Nicki Minaj turned female hip hop into female hip hop. Everyone now thinks female rappers have to do whimsical voices with a little mystical singing in between raps and it's annoying. That kind of reminds me of Doja Cat comment we just talked about. Someone said that Nicki Minaj is a good rapper and that she's extremely overhyped, just like Drake. I don't think she's the most fe talented female rapper. I feel like Dochi, Queen Latifah, Remy Ma, Ra Digga, MC Light, Roxanne Shante, and Show the Product, not to mention Lil' Kim and Foxy would embarrass her in a rap battle. And she has the most insufferable fan base. So I think that there is a level of this like kiss the ring mentality when it especially comes to female rap. And it's always kind of been like that, like specifically with the women, it just gets like, oh, you have to like praise the ground that this person walks on because they open this door. Nikki felt like she experienced that when she came into the industry and the way that a lot of girls feel like they owe something to her. It really, to me, has ruined a lot of like the dynamics of female rap. If I'm being honest, like the lack of collaborations, the amount of drama, the amount of like politics that go into it, we lose out on so much great music because of this kiss the ring mentality, because you have to like respect and bow down to the queen. And the girls have done this themselves too. Like they're the ones who like at the start of their career praise the, the ground she walks on. And then when they realize, oh wait, this isn't what it seems, turns into World War III. I think there's become this paradigm with like Nicki Minaj, where the girls are fighting for features, which I don't think that she owes people that. But there has become this perception that like she is the final boss, she is the end all be all, anybody else who says anything. Like I, somebody said, oh, I look up to Lil' Kim. And then it's like, no, but you just said Nicki Minaj. Loser. It is exhausting. There are other, female rappers who paved the way for her. There's other female rappers that you can argue are skillfully stronger than her. And people need to accept those debates and those conversations and let that be. We can't ignore the fact that Minaj's impact is huge. And I will say absolutely from a commercial standpoint, Nicki Minaj is the most successful to ever do it. Commercial branding, um, rapping when you package it all up for sure. But let's not act like there are not other people, especially like that second comment listed of multiple excellent MCs that deserve credit. Same way that there are newer girls coming up who are lyrically gifted, but because they don't kiss the ground that that lady walks on, you also call them trash. That's, that's exactly why a lot of you guys propped up somebody like Ice Spice is because you didn't like a certain somebody else. Let's be real from a perspective of all the other MCs that came before her who people could argue out rap her. As much as a, tr as a trendsetter that Nicki Minaj is, you can't take that away. And when we think of Lil' Kim, Lil' Kim is literally the blueprint for a lot of the girls who are rapping right now. But for some reason, that is such a debate. Like, I don't under, why is that such a divisive debate? I don't understand that because it is legit a fact. So I don't like this idea of like trying to pin with female rap, period. Even when Nicki came out, this idea of trying to constantly humble her. Oh, you need to be praising Kim. You need to be giving your credit all to her. I don't think she should have had to do that either. So let's cut it out. Sure, give people credit, but let people write their own stories and not try to like pin this. And I see this in female rap so much, way more than I see it with male rappers. Yeah, you respect certain people, but this constant like fiending to like humble people versus letting people come out and do their thing, it's exhausting. Now, someone said, every drill song sounds the same, no originality at all. Thank you. When I tell you guys that drill, and I'm gonna say this specifically, New York drill, very specifically, drill kind of, but New York drill might be one of the most inspired redundant trends of hip hop in the last two decades, actually in its history. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it there. In its history, I'm so serious. It grinds my gears on how simple producers have made drill, how simple and uninspired rappers have made drill. Drill is genuinely just built off samples and a drill beat. 
it's overstated. It's welcome in my opinion. And now we're seeing like, okay, if you're a drill rapper, I understand that being your niche. But like now we're seeing rappers who don't even do all that do drill. And I'm just like, you don't have to, we you don't have to do this. Drill ultimately combines elements of like, let's say Chicago drill with production set in this UK drill space. From the dissing dead ops, uninspired or maybe too inspired lyrics. Like too inspired. It's like people are either screaming on the mic or they're tired and lethargic. I'm tired of drill personally. I'm over it. I'm over it. I want to return to sender. Someone said we failed Azalea Banks. I'm gonna just keep this very short and sweet. I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. I feel like in a lot of ways, Azalea Banks has failed herself time and time again. When you unprovoked come for people, like unprovoked, like the amount of rants that she goes on with people who do not address her is actually insane. And when you think about industry connections or everything from the managers to the actual artists, to the labels, to the execs themselves, people don't wanna touch you with a 10 foot pole. Now I get like, she comes for some people who absolutely deserve it, but there's a lot of people that unprovoked she just comes for for no reason. And no one's going to like you. And you keep doing it to yourself time and time again. I don't know what else to say. We're gonna do the last comment in the rap section. Someone said that hip hop music falling off in the charts in recent years is good for the genre. It has been watered down by TikTok trendy sounds and flooded with untalented artists that can easily come into the game because the standards for rappers are on the ground. We're over it. The genre needs a reset and I believe that the fall of hip hop music in the charts will force true rap artistry to return to the center of attention. I agree with this wholeheartedly. Like as someone who wants to root for hip hop and like the culture, I just feel like at this rate, at this point, y'all need to be taught a lesson because the music that people are putting out in rap and hip hop, especially the guys right now, it's abysmal. It is literally the bar is in hell. It is so bad. And we just talked about drill. That is a continuation of this, but overall as a whole, it's a problem. And I know like Lil Durk tweeted literally the other day, like hip hop is dying or it's not the same. And like people were quoting like, dude, you are part of the problem. Sending your songs to get like listened to and tested out by Aiden Ross. Out of all people, a collab album with Morgan Wallen, like the watered down ass music. If people get a wake up call and really go back to the root of like what hip hop can be, what it was, and we stop just letting anybody into the space, we can really start to have like a general like renaissance. And it's so sad to say a renaissance of rap and hip hop because it is such a young genre, but I want to see better. I really do. I think that there's so many talented folks and we need like a reset, but let's spin the wheel. We're going to go to our next category. All right, our next category is R and B. Someone said, in my opinion, Tyla winning a Grammy so early in her career was not a wise decision by her team. It has expectations way too high than they should be for someone so new in the industry. Essentially, it sounds like you kind of feel like nominating her song Water was a misstep for her team because I believe that people have to nominate the songs and like submit the song. Um, to be fair to her team. Water did take the world by storm. So I understand them wanting to nominate it wholeheartedly, especially if this may be her only chance to ever get a Grammy under your belt. The price does go up. As much as I have issues with the Grammys, a lot of the reasons why artists want to win things like Oscars or Grammys is because the price goes up. Having that by your name, people automatically take you more serious from the label to the industry. Um, and it does give her more eyes. So in a way, I almost kind of feel like, yeah, the higher expectations, it comes with the price. But I mean, to say you have a Grammy and you might never get one. I mean, we have artists who have been in the game for 20 plus years, 15 plus years, 10 plus years who have never gotten a Grammy. You have excellent artists who only have like five. I would gun for it. If it's, it's sometimes a once in a lifetime opportunity, gun for it. I do, though, agree with you that I think it did create some hate around her and I also think it created these expectations that I don't know if artistically or creatively she has the tools to be able to really live up to that she got the Grammy though so I guess somebody said that off the wall was and always will be Michael Jackson's best album I actually the more that I sit and I think about this as I have a thriller record on my wall it's actually an original thriller record it was passed down to me I actually think that this is kind of true off the wall is a much more cohesive album sonically when we talk about a body of work there is more of a common thread there's a story there's a sonic theme that really bridges everything together thriller is like kind of like a playlist great songs but like from thriller to human nature to the girl is mine to wanna be sorry like all of the songs are very very different 
So when you listen to like an album like Off the Wall from top to bottom, it's very like cohesive. It reads very well. It's thriller, you listen to that track list, it's like a playlist. It's like, oh, okay, we on this vibe. Oh, okay, we on this vibe. Oh, you know? So I actually agree with you on this. Someone says that Beyonce would still be as successful if Aaliyah was still alive. Don't get me wrong, Aaliyah was talented but never was on Beyonce's level. And if I'm being honest with you, I do agree. I think that Aaliyah and Beyonce would have coexisted because they were different artists. When people say like, oh, if Aaliyah was alive, Beyonce would be nothing. Not necessarily. I understand where you're coming from, though, because we have seen historically that with women and then with black women, there's usually only allowed to be like one supreme star that they're pushing. But to me, Beyonce and Aaliyah are two totally different artists. Aaliyah, I think, offered more of a laid back persona. I think she was more of like the style icon. She curated the vibes. The brand offered a futuristic, trendy style. She was really p pushing that sound forward. I think Beyonce, yes, trendsetter, but she was bolder vocally. She was a very strong vocalist, full-fledged performer, right? Um, and also, I think she was more archival in the fact of, like, she's pulling inspiration from past greats. And a lot of people admired her for that as well. So I... In a way, I even hate this argument just because I hate how people propose the fact that Beyonce wouldn't even be anything as if it would have been a crime for like two black pop and R&B stars to exist at the same time in the same world. Um, and we're acting like they're similar. They're not. They, they were very, very different. And also, we don't know what Aaliyah would have been doing had she been alive. So this there's kind of like a dead end argument here because at the time that Aaliyah had passed, she was in this like level of mass expanding into the fashion world and into movies and acting and appearances so who knows would Aaliyah have stuck with music in the way that we think she would have or would she have become like this Rihanna like figure where she's like this mogul next category We're going to talk about artistry. Um, someone said, my unpopular opinion is as a classically trained vocalist, you don't need to show off your crazy high notes for your shit to be good or impressive. Technique over vocal range. When we talk about like the vocal enthusiasts, a lot of the times it is the people with the highest vocal range, the belters that get a lot of the credit. And if you don't have that, you are not impressive or you are basically told that you're not that great of a singer. I do think that vocal gymnastics can be fun. I'm not gonna lie, I love to hear the range, I love to hear the riffs, I love to hear the runs, I love all of that. I love to see the tricks, but I often see that softer singers or people with smaller vocal ranges get dissed or not get a lot of credit or get disregarded when it comes to vocal technique. Um, because there is a lot of vocal technique that goes into different ranges, smaller ranges, higher ranges, softer tones, beltier tones. And in a way, I always like to connect things back to what I understand. In dance, for example, it reminds me of that. I used to be a competitive dancer. You would have like those competitive dancers that would do all the tricks in the world, that would be doing backflips and all types of shit, and they would naturally get scored higher and have a higher difficulty level despite it not really being dance it's just tricks it's just the flash it's just the glam it's the glitz right versus the dancers who get on stage and have a level of artistry it might be a little more of like this quiet calm nature but it's beautiful it's profound the the artistic layering the technique that they use but because it's not in your face people assume that it's not as good that kind of reminds me of that so I agree with this wholeheartedly especially when I put that analogy into play songs should dial it down with the production as if we need less obvious auto-tuning and crispier more dynamic sound production they also said lastly songs need to chill let us breathe um the spotify effect made songs so compact that there's no room for short instrumental sections or to tiny no vocals parts a lot of people actually like that overproduction kind of vibe so i actually think this is kind of unpopular because like we have so many tools available to us it's amazing it's so amazing all of the possibilities you can do to music i've noticed to a lot of the albums i've listened to production is too damn much yup 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 way too much now i can see if it's something like hyper pop or it's a genre that really leans into the production i can look at that and put my feelings aside to some capacity still not my favorite genre r b some pop for etc you have people who are genuinely great vocalists but they muddy it out with the overproduction the over auto tune with kehlani's crash album some of her vocals felt so overproduced to me 
from an effect standpoint that I, I, I had to deduct. It was actually so noticeable to me. And she has such a smooth, pure, beautiful tone that doesn't need the works. And I feel like it should be used sparingly. I feel like Summer Walker is another one of those people that overuses autotune despite having a very nice voice. And that last part about like letting the song breathe is all too real. And it's okay to let that picture settle and let people take it in without being rushed. It's like going to an art gallery and people are shoving you to look at the next painting. That's what it feels like. Sometimes you want to be able to look at all of the details. All right, guys, so we are going to end this with our last category, which is going to be miscellaneous, our kind of random opinion. Someone said that Adele is severely overrated when it comes to white soul singers. JoJo and Kelly Clarkson vocally beat her on any given day. She shouldn't be put in the powerhouse category of singers. Love her deeply though. So I literally saw a post the other day of someone being like, we need to get a Kelly Clarkson versus Adele, like a versus um, hypothetical. And some people were saying like Adele would wash Kelly Clarkson easily. And I've had to gain more perspective of it as I've done research, but I've always been a Kelly Clarkson enthusiast. Ever since she won American Idol, that was my girl. Love her, loved her since I was a kid. And I think where Kelly is set apart is Kelly has a lot of like textures and variety in her voice from the powerhouse nature of her vocals to the falsetto, the softness of her voice to the control, right? That she's able to use. To me, I think she's a lot more of a dynamic singer from a listening and technique perspective than Adele. I just think that the perception, the reason why Adele is given so much credit and like that soul singer category is because her voice has a lot of raw emotion and on when you pair it to what she sings about in her song sonically it creates I don't want to say an illusion because I don't want it that comes off like I'm saying it's inauthentic it creates this perception that there's so much feeling and that technically she's so great and so skilled and really when you talk to a lot of trained vocalists they will say that her vocal technique is not that great from a technical perspective versus like a Kelly Clarkson. Anybody who's a vocalist, I would love for you guys to really chime in on this conversation here. When we talk about the white soul singer, it's gonna ruffle feathers. Oh. Someone said just because an artist is dead doesn't mean they're good. The only reason why Juice World and XXX are so popular is because they died. Don't get me wrong, they're great artists, but I feel like people only praise them as much as they do because they died. If they had not died, they wouldn't be as nearly popular as they are. No disrespect, guys, but I, I, I agree with this 100%. The idea that someone is a legend or a lot of people use that title after they pass on. You weren't really saying that when they were alive, um, and I think these two guys are examples of this for sure now i think there's like a psychological reason and not even psychological i just think from like a normal standpoint i don't actually think it's that complicated and i think there's a longing and an overcompensation to keep that legacy alive so fans cling on to that there is this lingering idea of what if and so in a way you can perceive them to be any way that you wanted them to be in the future right you can create like this imagery in your head because it's not going to happen so sometimes out of that people over measure their impact or more in the potential of what they could have been so they assign and attribute these feelings of like legend icon they're the greatest and someone made a point i was it was on a reddit thread someone was like some of these guys especially when they pass on young they were never around long enough to really tarnish their music legacy yet or they weren't long enough for people to start getting tired of them. And it's really sad to say that, but music is kind of like this cycle. And so you see a lot of artists outlive their legacy and just like kind of ruin it. And for some of these guys who pass on very young, there's, there's the sky's really the limit because it never fully happened. So I think that's where that comes from, but I would agree with this for sure. Somebody said, the music industry should make people purchase albums again. New albums and songs should be for purchase the first three months, then placed on streaming services for regular play. So I actually do think that this could be a good solution. And I wonder like the viability. I know a lot of artists have been selling, speaking of variants, have been selling variants again and things like that to push physical sales. And it's been working. The world has moved into a digital direction. So I guess what you're saying is like, people would have to go on iTunes and like buy. Like, okay, this album's $10, this album's whatever dollars. And actually, I do think it might be realistic. I think it could do two things. I think some people will probably protest because we become so spoiled. I'm not saying that's right. People might just wait to listen to the album. So that's gonna, I guess, result in 
maybe art is holding out more and more, like holding out their earning potential on what they would possibly make. And the accessibility kind of goes down. But also I think the positive could be like music enthusiasts would really like, oh, I want to know what's up. So they would be forced to buy it. I don't think that's a bad idea. What do you guys think? And then our last one today, I'm going to say, there will never be one particular queen, king, goat of any genre of music. Options of opinions of artists will always vary and evolve. So opinions on who's the greatest will always vary and evolve. Um, the single best artist of any given genre is an unattainable ideal. In realness and leaving space for like realism and objectiveness, this is true. This is not wrong. And I do agree with this. I do think that there are people in genres who single handedly like actually you can there is proof that they have done it the best, right? From an impact standpoint, from a monetary standpoint, from a record breaking standpoint. And there's very few people that you can point to. But I think it's safe to say somebody like Michael Jackson is the GOAT. Now you can say in which genre, which category, we could talk about it. Now when you're saying the best musician of all time, that's where I understand like the bigger you get out the microscope, the harder it gets to really be honest and accurate. But somebody like Michael Jackson, who spanned globally, people knew who he was. People clearly took him as inspiration and it spawned an entire and it inspired further greats that we would see in the rest of the 20th century and the 21st century. And again, it doesn't fall on deaf ears. Somebody like Michael Jackson took heavy inspiration from people from before him. So then, yeah, you can get into the semantics of, well, this person might be the greatest of all time because they inspired him to be blah, blah, blah. I do think that there's fair arguments, though, for a goat. And I also think the goat conversation is really like a fun thing to really like measure impact. So I don't know if everybody takes it super serious. Anyways, guys, this was so long. What do you guys think of these opinions? If your opinion was on here, thank you so much for sharing. Let's have proper, honest, fun, polite discourse in the comments. Um, and hit that subscribe button down below. Click that link down below to get your Raycons for 15% off. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next one.